It so happened that there was no one at the moment on Tate Hill Pier, as all those whose houses are in close proximity were either in bed or were out on the heights above. Those of the Coast Guard on duty on the eastern side of the harbor, who at once ran down to the little pier, was the first to climb on board. The men working the searchlight after scouring the entrance of the harbor without seeing anything, then turned the light on the derelict and kept it there. The Coast Guard ran aft, and when he came beside the wheel, bent over to examine it, and recoiled at once as though under some sudden emotion. This seemed to pique general curiosity, and quite a number of people began to run. It is a good way round from the West Cliff by the drawbridge to Tate Hill Pier but your correspondent is a fairly good runner and came well ahead of the crowd. When I arrived, however, I found already assembled on the pier a crowd whom the Coast Guard and police refused to allow to come on board. By the courtesy of the chief boatman, I was, as your correspondent, permitted to climb on deck and was one of a small group who saw the dead seamen whilst actually lashed to the wheel. It was no wonder that the Coast Guard was surprised or even awed for not often can such a sight have been seen. The man was simply fastened by his hands tied one over the other to a spoke of the wheel. Between the inner hand and the wood was a crucifix, the set of beads on which it was fastened being around both wrists and wheel and all kept fast by the binding cords. The poor fellow may have been seated at one time, but the flapping and buffeting of the sails had worked through the rudder of the wheel and dragged him to and fro, so that the cords with which he was tied had cut the flesh to the bone. Accurate note was made of the state of things in a doctor, Surgeon J. M. Caffin of 33 East Elliott Place, who came immediately after me, declared after making examination that the man must have been dead for quite two days. In his pocket was a bottle, carefully corked, empty save for a little roll of paper, which proved to be the addendum to the log. The Coast Guard said the man must have tied up his own hands, fastening the knots with his teeth. The fact that a Coast Guard was the first on board may save some complications. Later on in the Admiralty Court, for Coast Guards cannot claim the salvage which is the right of the first civilian entering on a derelict. Already, however, the legal tongues are wagging, and one young law student is loudly asserting that the rights of the owner are already completely sacrificed, his property being held in contravention of the statutes of Mortmain, since the tiller as emblemship, if not proof of delegated possession, is held in a dead hand. It is needless to say that the dead steersman had been reverently removed from the place where he held his honorable watch and ward till death. A steadfastness as noble as that of the young Casabianca and placed in the mortuary to await inquest. Already the sudden storm is passing and its fierceness is abating. Crowds are scattering homeward and the sky is beginning to redden over the Yorkshire wolves. I shall send in time for your next issue further details of the derelict ship which found her way so miraculously into harbor in the storm. Whitby.